Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to uh, Midday Prayers on Wednesday. Sorry, I'm a couple of minutes late. I just had a phone call and um, I had to tell the lovely person that it was uh, time for me to um, get online and to do our Midday Prayers. So it's uh, good to see you today. Um, good to see people joining in. Uh, as I always say, it is really encouraging when people just um, make a, a note, drop a comment, tell me you're watching. Um, that can be really encouraging to know that I'm not talking to myself. Um, and it's lovely to what the, the, the Facebook tells me that Gillian's watching. Welcome, Gillian. And that um, there are three other people as well. So um, perhaps uh, some others will, will join in in a moment. Um, do find, um, you might want to find in your Bible, Psalm 102 and Matthew chapter 10. And we'll continue um, working our way through through that. Good afternoon Julia, welcome and also to Alan and uh, perhaps Robin's watching with Julia. I don't know how you're feeling today, um, it's a bit of a funny time this September isn't it? We've got lots of new beginnings and yet there's lots of challenge and I get a sense uh, that lots of people are feeling a bit deflated, a bit down, I can certainly identify with that. A um, bit of a challenge to know where we go from here and uh, hasn't the news been challenging over the last uh, couple, well, over the last day, the news that we're going to um, need to res be restricted again in the number of people that can gather. I'm sure that that's wise and I'm sure they're um, following the science and that's the right thing to do. At the same time, that can make us uh, feel a, a little bit um, down, given that we've enjoyed being able to meet in bigger groups over the summer. Uh, and so I don't know how you're feeling. Some other things have been making me feel a bit unsettled. I saw some astonishing scenes on the news yesterday of uh, militia groups in the United States, fully armed militia groups, out on the streets. Um, the police uh, very much in the background, not, not that evident at first, certainly. That's how the news reported it. And um, these fully armed, I mean fully armed with semi-automatic rifles and machine guns and camouflage gear, um, some extreme right-wing militia, and also some groups on the other side um, who were also feeling the need perhaps to defend themselves or to, to uh, be on, present on the streets. And that's really unsettling uh, to wonder what's going to happen in the course of the next few months with an election. So lots of things that perhaps, I don't know about you, making us feel unsettled. There have also been those news, of uh, sad news of, of different events in our country this week um, in schools. Um, with stabbings and shootings. So, uh, what well, not a cheery way to begin, but just uh, perhaps just to acknowledge that um, if you're uh, like me, feeling a little bit unsettled, I'm sure you're not alone and um, a little bit down. So perhaps as we read our Bible readings today, we can reflect on what God might be saying to us uh, in the midst of this. And I'm sure it's an encouragement to us as family, as brothers and sisters, as Christians, firstly, to be loving and caring for one another. If I'm feeling a bit down, then I'm sure somebody else is too. So perhaps that phone call, um, that popping around, uh, socially distanced, that's uh, encouraging my brother or sister. And also to reach out beyond our um, church family community to others in need around us. Um, and I think perhaps today's Bible readings are quite challenging in some ways, but they also uh, will speak into that, I think. So uh, good to see you, Diana, uh, Christine, Kim. I can see you're watching. That's great. And I'm sure there are others too. Uh, psalm 102 is our psalm for the day. It's quite a long one. And I think this is a psalm written by somebody who is having um, symptoms, what seems to me symptoms of depression and low mood and feeling um, really, really down and crying out to God in the midst of that. So if that's you today, then um, we can perhaps reflect on how the psalmist deals with those feelings and um, how he brings them to God. So before we get on to our psalm, let's begin in our usual way. And uh, if you're used to gathering with us, you'll perhaps know these responses. And if um, you are joining us for the first time, I'm sure you'll get the hang of it. So let's um, say these responses together. Grace, 
mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And I invite you to respond and also with you. And let's remember, this is the day that the Lord has made. So let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Well, as I indicated, um, we're going to read Psalm 102. And reading this psalm, I think this person um, is going through a time of anxiety and depression, it seems to me. That's the modern language we would perhaps use. It says at the title, a prayer of an afflicted person who's grown weak and pours out a lament before the Lord. So let's, um, let's read this psalm together and reflect on what it might speak to us, how it might speak to us about how we can respond to God when we go through times of anxiety or low mood. Hear my prayer, Lord. Let my cry for help come to you. Don't hide your face from me when I'm in distress. Turn your ear to me when I call, answer me quickly. For my days vanish like smoke, my bones burn like glowing embers. My heart is blighted and withered like grass, I forget to eat my food. In my distress I groan aloud and am reduced to skin and bones. I'm like a desert owl, like an owl among the ruins. I lie awake, I've become like a bird alone on a roof. All day long my enemies taunt me, those who rail against me use my name as a curse. For I eat ashes as my food, and mingle my drink with tears. Because of your great wrath, for you have taken me up and thrown me aside. My days are like the evening shadow, I wither away like grass. But you, Lord, sit enthroned for ever. Your renown endures through all generations. You will arise and have compassion on Zion, for it's time to show favour to her. The appointed time has come. For her stones are dear to your servants. Her very dust moves them to pity. The nations will fear the name of the Lord. All the kings of the earth will revere your glory. For the Lord will rebuild Zion and appear in glory. He will respond to the prayer of the destitute. He will not despise their plea. Let this be written for future generations, that a people not yet created may praise the Lord. The Lord looked down from his sanctuary on high. From heaven he viewed the earth to hear the groans of the prisoners and release those condemned to death. So the name of the Lord will be declared in Zion and his praises in Jerusalem. When the peoples and the kingdom assemble to worship the Lord, in the course of my life, he broke my strength, he cut short my days. So I said, do not take me away, my God, in the midst of my days. Your years go on through all generations. In the beginning, you laid the foundations of the earth and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like a garment, like clothing, you will change them and they will be discarded, but you remain the same and your years will never end. The children of your servants will live in your presence. Their descendants will be established before you. Well, there's so many different ideas in that psalm. I think at the beginning he is crying out in distress. I notice that he's having trouble sleeping at night. He says he's like an owl. Um, he's like a bird alone in the rafters. He can't sleep at night. Maybe she, whoever the psalmist is. Uh, food tastes like ashes. He's lost his appetite. She's lost her appetite. Feeling really down. Uh, I notice too the way that quickly the person writing this poem begins to blame themselves. As God, you're punishing me. Um, why are you punishing me? Uh, and uh, your, your wrath is... Uh, it's heavy against me. I'm looking for that verse now and I can't find it immediately, but I noted it as we went through that the psalmist was, um, that's right, verse 10. And it can be easy, can't it, when we're feeling down to uh, be full of self-blame and to blame ourselves and think it's something that we've done wrong. And um, sometimes there are things that we can change in our lives and do better. Maybe um, sometimes it is about adjusting our relationship with God committing ourselves to depending on him and trusting in him. Um, if 
we have become um, uh, irregular in our prayer pattern, returning to a regular pattern of prayer. If we've uh, got into our head that God's cross with us, remembering that he is full of grace and love and mercy, that's what tomorrow's psalm will tell us. And to be confident in coming back to him because he's a God of forgiveness and love. Um, it can be natural to blame ourselves. Because we're going through hard times does not mean we've done anything wrong at all. But it can be a, a prompt to uh, address our relationship with God and turn back to him. So that's one thing I was thinking about. Another thing the psalmist does is to remember God's goodness. Um, to remember his love. And so to come back to him and uh, to use his praise for God as a reminder of God's love and goodness. Uh, the Lord looked down from his uh, sanctuary on high, from heaven he viewed the earth. The name of the Lord will be declared in Zion, his praise in Jerusalem. Um, in the beginning you laid the foundation of the earth, the heavens are the work of your hands. Lots of words of praise to God. And part of that praise is to remember God's uh, everlasting nature, his eternity. And sometimes our difficulties seem to overwhelm us and be so big. Um, and uh, maybe that's what we feel with this pandemic. It looms over everything, doesn't it? it it's, um, there seems so much that we can be concerned about and there are right concerns. And yet the psalmist remain, reminds us that God is from everlasting to everlasting. That kingdoms rise and fall, but God remains the same forever. Um, presidents come and go, prime ministers come and go, governments come and go, pandemics come and go. But God remains forever. And he's a God of love and goodness and we can trust in him. And as Christians, we not only have a hope for this life, a God who loves us and walks with us and is present with us, but we have a hope for eternity. Because we know as Christians, as we trust in Jesus' promise that even death is not the end, that death doesn't separate us from his love. In fact, that death is the beginning of life in eternity with him. Uh, and so we have a hope that is eternal. So if we're feeling down, this psalmist reminds us we have permission to feel down. That's OK. And in fact, we have permission to tell God how we feel and to pour that out to him as the psalmist does and to cry out to God um, and then um, to begin to remember God's goodness. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it to praise God that he is eternal. He is from everlasting to everlasting. He is the creator that um, in his might and power, our problems um, suddenly can seem much smaller and ma more manageable because he is the one who holds it. And so um, that's not to make us feel discouraged, but encouraged. It is OK to groan and cry out and to feel as we do, if that's how we're feeling. At the same time, we trust in a God who loves us and is from everlasting to everlasting. So as Diana says, that seems to me to be quite an appropriate psalm for today, perhaps a bit depressing as we first read it, and yet chiming in perhaps with um, how many people may be feeling um, as this pandemic carries on and seems to stretch into the months ahead. Um, it will end. Life will get better. Life will change. God is eternal. But in the midst of it, that may not be being that may not bring us much encouragement. And so we take a day at a time and we hold on to God and remember that he loves us and he walks with us. And um, we ask for his blessing each day. Let's just pause and praise God. Lord God, we thank you for the Psalms. We thank you for the Psalms that give us permission to express how we're feeling each day, to express who we are. We thank you uh, for the Psalms, which have these records of people who have sometimes felt as we feel and the permission to bring those to you in prayer. Lord, we thank you that you are eternal, that you are everlasting, that you are almighty, that you are a God of love. Lord, may we find strength and comfort each day just the encouragement we need for each day. Um, and Lord, may we be a people who love and encourage one another. All this we ask in Jesus' name.
Amen. So we move on to our reading, our reading from Matthew's Gospel. We've been working through Matthew chapter 10. And so here we are at verse 24. And uh, we've been working through this and Jesus is sending out uh, the twelve. And we looked at uh, on Monday at how they were being sent out in vulnerability and weakness and how um, Jesus sends us in weakness too, in order that we can trust in him and in order that we can encounter uh, people first with our own vulnerability and weakness, not our strength. And that can open up opportunities and conversations um, as we support and love one another. And then Martin and Carita led us through yesterday's verses. Um, Jesus' teaching at the beginning of chapter 10 is immediate, and then it goes on to more general into the future, as he looks forward to the, the disciples, not only in their mission right there and then, but in the future, in the days after um, he's returned to his Father in heaven, and the challenge it will be to be a Christian um, in the days when they encounter persecution, and how that has been true and continues to be true for many Christians throughout the world today. And that um, continues to be the context of um, the verses today. Um, so, uh, verse, chapter 10, verse 24. Students are not above their teacher, nor servants above their master. It's enough for students to be like their teacher and servants like their master. If the head of the house has been called Beelzebul, how much more the members of his household? So do not be afraid of them. There is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the rooftops. Don't be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Aren't two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside of your father's care. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Well, um, Jesus is saying to his uh, disciples don't be surprised if you encounter hard times don't be surprised if you're persecuted if i your teacher says jesus to them have, have was persecuted you can expect to be no different for you um if i uh, your master experience persecution if they called me the devil that's what it means in verse 25 where the, the master of the house has been called beelzebub if they call me the devil, says Jesus, you can expect them to call you all kinds of names. Don't be surprised if as a Christian you suffer persecution. Um, in the United Kingdom in the 21st century, um, Christians don't really encounter persecution. We may encounter some um, hostility at times. Sometimes our outlook is unpopular and our viewpoint can be. And Jesus says, don't be surprised if people um, persecute you. For us, that might be, um, we might be on the brunt of some teasing. We might be on the brunt of some rejection, some hostility, if we express a Christian view that's unpopular. By the way, when we do that, we always need to do that with grace and to reflect on whether uh, the view we hold is one that truly is one we hold because it's Jesus' teaching or, or one we hold because uh, Christian culture has made us hold that view so we always need to be questioning ourselves but where we are receive rejection and hostility because we're trying to follow Jesus then Jesus says don't be surprised that happened to me and of course there are many places in the world where um, to be a Christian is to risk your own life um, not least in places like North Korea where to express loyalty to Jesus Christ is to um, it can be a death sentence. So um, don't be surprised if it's difficult to be a Christian. I notice that Jesus' words here are echoed again in John's Gospel in chapter 13 after Jesus has washed the disciples' feet. He says again, um, students are not above their teacher, and so you must do as I have done. And then 
Jesus goes on to his famous and lovely words, which perhaps can be an encouragement to us today if we feel down. Um, are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside your father's care. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. And nothing can separate us from God's love. And um, that's a wonderful affirmation from Jesus, that God knows each and every one of us. You know, there's uh, two things to hold in tension uh, through the Bible. One is um, God is almighty, and that's perhaps what we were reflecting on God in that psalm. Uh, God is eternal, from everlasting to everlasting. We're only beginning to uh, grasp the vastness of the universe. Quite, it is mind-blowing, quite the distances in the space. And, and our galaxy is tiny, our sun is tiny, our earth is a mere dot, and we on that earth are tiny and insignificant in comparison to this amazing almighty God who's created this vast universe. What are human beings that you should be mindful of them, says is it Psalm 8, I think. And so that's a truth that can be a, an encouragement because we can put our problems into that context, but it might then lead us to feel, well, I'm insignificant, I'm nothing. And so here we have this complementary truth from Jesus, that despite the vastness of space, the vastness of the earth, the, the billions of human beings, that your heavenly father knows the number of hairs on your head. In my case, it's uh, getting fewer every day, but he loves me and knows me and knows me through and through. And he knows you too. He knows you through and through. Uh, Jesus says that not a sparrow falls to the ground and God doesn't know about it. And he says, um, how much more worth are you than a sparrow? Um, that encouragement that God loves us and knows us. And, um, you know, what am I worth to God? Well, one way of thinking about that is your worth, what someone will um, pay. Someone pays um, a couple of pennies or a penny for a two, pen two sparrows for a penny. Well, God loves you so much that he left his throne in heaven and he came and he lived amongst us and he stretched out his arms on a cross and he died on a cross for you out of love for you. And that is what you're worth to him. Um, we can um, put that alongside those stories of the lost sheep and the shepherd he goes to find the sheep, the story of the prodigal son. Um, God's care for you is deep and vast and his love for you. And so it's interesting, isn't it, in this passage that on the one hand, Jesus is saying, don't expect life to be easy. Uh, you know, if I experienced hardship and persecution and of course, Jesus experiences death on the cross. He says, um, don't expect to be different for the um, student if it was like that for the teacher. So don't expect life to be easy. And certainly in our own small way, we can testify that life's hard at the moment for many people. Don't expect life to be easy, says Jesus. It's going to be hard. But that complementary truth is God loves you. He knows the very hairs on your head and his love for you is deep and profound. Uh, he knows you through and through and loves you through and through. And you are worth to him far more than many sparrows. He stretched out his arms on a cross for you, gave his life for you. Uh, we can easily get into the thought that if God loves me, surely life will be straightforward. But that's not the message of Jesus. It is sometimes life is hard and difficult and it is also God loves you and neither um, height nor depth nor anything in all creation, neither um, angels nor demons, not even uh, death can separate us from his love. Whatever trouble comes doesn't separate us from his love. He is with us. So I've rambled on for a long time there. I hope some of that might have been helpful. It's uh, well time that we uh, turned to prayer. I wonder what you would like to pray for today. Um, do mention things in the comments. Um, I find that um, quite helpful and I 
think it means that the rest of us can pray that prayer with you. I think I mentioned at the beginning some of the things that are troubling me today and perhaps troubling others of us. Um, the, the news of the, of the additional lockdown is perhaps a, a, not unexpected, probably wise, but a, a bit of a discouragement for us. Um, let's be praying uh, for wisdom for everybody that we will um, continue to act wisely with one another and look after one another by obeying the, the sensible regulations. For wisdom to know how we can continue to love and care for one another and each other's mental health. Um, let's pray for the government as they make difficult decisions for wisdom for them. Let's pray for the vaccine makers. We there, There's news that inevitably, as will always happen, there's been a bit of a hiccup in the trial. Uh, of course, there would have been. They've got to make sure it's safe. They need to make sure it's safe. But let's continue to thank God for those working on the vaccines. Um, let's pray too for those working on treatments that um, there are different ways out of this pandemic and one of them is a vaccine which may or may not come. Another is the improved understanding of the illness and better treatments so that when people get COVID they're not so badly affected. So let's pray for that. Let's continue to pray for schools. Let's pray for people's mental health. As I said, I was quite disturbed by those pictures from the United States. So let's be praying for that country. Um, for a peaceful election, for a clear result, um, for a healing of divisions, for good and wise leadership. Um, yes, I think, um, as Diana's saying, um, there can be real confusion. And certainly I, I sense that as uh, we try to make decisions as a church, confusion about what's what we're allowed to do and not allowed to do, what's wise to do, what's unwise. So real wisdom as we seek to follow the guidance and real clarity from decision makers in explaining that clearly so we understand <clears throat> what we can and can't do. I'm sure the government's going to make that clearer this afternoon. Um, at four o'clock, I think, the Prime Minister's giving a statement and some of the questions I have at the moment as to what quite is covered, um, I'm sure they will look to address those in due course. But let's be praying about all of that situation. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we bring one another to you as we gather here now in our own homes, um, separated by some distance, some of us, some far away. Lord, we pray that you would help us to encourage each other to continue to encourage one another. Lord, we thank you that you are eternal and almighty. We thank you for the depth of your love for each one of us, that you know each one of us uh, through and through. Lord, may you bless us and help us to encourage each other with these truths this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we bring to you this new situation with the uh, new restrictions coming in. Lord, would you give wisdom to decision makers? We pray for the Prime Minister, for the scientific advisers, for all who um, advise and create policy. Lord, for wisdom in the decisions they make, and for clarity in the way that they are expressed. And Lord, then we pray for ourselves that we would care for one another by acting wisely, care for one another through cooperating with mask wearing, with distancing, with following um, the necessary rules. And Lord, at the same time as um, people perhaps tire of this situation as people's moods maybe dip. Lord, would you show us how we can encourage and support and love one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Heavenly Father, we bring to you uh, the United States. We think of those cities in the United States where armed militia are on the streets, sometimes in opposing camps and confronting one another. Lord, we pray for peace in that country over this coming month. We pray for the president, Donald Trump, for the democratic contender, Joe Biden. Lord, we pray for a peaceful election in which the issues are debated well. Lord, we pray for the election to have a clear outcome, for it to be a peaceful um, outcome, if there's a transition of power for that to be peaceful. And Lord, we pray for both candidates and people of, on both sides of a divide, that they would truly work together for the good of their nation in the things that they say and do, and Lord, for the good of the wider world. Lord, we pray for good and wise leadership in that land, which is so influential. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Heavenly Father, um, apart from COVID, we continue to pray for the other issues that our government um, deals with for wisdom, for leadership here in this land, for good decision making, uh, for us seeking after the common good in all the nations of this United Kingdom, and Lord, for our relationships with other countries, uh, we would handle that well as a nation, and Lord, across divides, that you would help us to work together for the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And our Heavenly Father, we pray for one another. Maybe there's someone known to you who's in special need at this time. Someone in your family, a friend. Maybe it's you who needs God's help specially today. Lord, we name these people. We bring ourselves. Lord, we hold on to that wonderful truth that you know us through and through that you expressed your love for us in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That was the depth of your love for each one of us. Lord, bring your healing and your comfort to those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's um, bring together our prayers uh, in the name, words of the Lord's Prayer. Let's um, also recognise Kim's prayer there as, as numbers go up. Lord, we do thank you for our National Health Service, for all who work in it. Lord, we remember again the risk that they, those who work on the front line carry. And we pray for the NHS through these coming weeks. As other illnesses rise too, such as flu, alongside coronavirus. Lord, would we um, support one another and our NHS through acting wisely. And we pray for good decisions to that end. And Lord, would you bless each and every person who works in the health service, most especially those known to us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you for um, the uh, comments, which I find really helpful, uh, the prayer requests. As uh, we've been saying since last week, things were going to change a little bit from Monday. We're not going to have daily uh, midday prayer. It's going to be on a Tuesday and a Thursday. Um, Tuesday is going to be Andor Baptist Church and Thursday is going to be St Peter's. Um, and we'll invite, obviously we'll, we'll, we'll share that um, between us um, and continue to join together as brothers and sisters in Christ and join together as churches. Um, then on a Wednesday for St Peter's, we're going to do something at midday which will give us an opportunity to reflect in more depth on what we've been thinking about on the Sunday. So for instance, for those at St Peter's, um, this Sunday we're thinking again about forgiveness. It raises so many issues. We would like um, to have an opportunity to go into that in a bit more depth on a Wednesday. Uh, and so that's going to be our pattern with a Wednesday refresh. So there'll be more information about that in, in the future. Um, it is so good that um, the numbers um, who join with us each midday is great. We've got 12 people with us right now. And I know a lot more tune in later in the day. We know that quite a lot more um, from St Peter's go on the uh, YouTube channel. And I know that's true of OBC too and people from further afield. Um, so it's sad in some ways that we're doing it not quite so often, but we feel this is sustainable um, for the long haul. And so, um, and perhaps uh, less often might enable more people to join with us more often, if that makes sense, the less can be more. So do keep an eye out for those um, changes. But tomorrow it's uh, Martin and Carita and then on Friday it'll be Martha. We've swapped this week and then we'll start our new regime uh, from next Monday, which means that next Tuesday it'll be ABC and next Thursday it'll be St Peter's. And there'll be something that St Peter's does next Wednesday lunchtime called a refresh. And that'll be our ongoing pattern. Thank you for joining us. Let's finish with a word of blessing to one another. Uh, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And may he make his face to shine upon you and grant you his peace this day and every day. Amen. <laughs>